When the sun starts growing colder and the dark starts getting bold, you don't know what the cards are holding and you think you want to fall. If you dare transform your destiny, you've been down on your luck. Oh, but I'm not giving up. Sometimes just enough is all you need. When the sky flashes a warning of the struggles to be born. Gotta hold out till the morning So you turn to face the storm Let the shadows fall Let the sirens call Underneath it all I'm whispering Let your troubles roll away Into my soul gates I won't look away I'm listening I got faith to And if you dare transform your destiny, you've been down on your luck. But I'm not giving up. Sometimes just enough feels all you need. Sometimes just enough feels. Are we not live? Oh no! <laughs> hey, hello everyone. It is Friday. Um, I've messed. I've messed with my microphone this week. Uh, unplugged and plugged it back in, so it changed names apparently in Windows. But hey, we're here. Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to. Thank you, Critwitch. Thank you so much. Uh, really proud of that video, actually. And uh, we should all thank the person that also made the music for the video above me on sketches um Alyssa and also um thank you Lysander and also uh, uh Jade Nebula for the character art His name handle is now in the video as well um but that said hello I am Simon welcome to the Wandering Society uh, you see him pronouns tonight we're going to be playing Spare Change our just in file campaign but before we delve into our adventure, let's just go very quickly through our sponsors and then our introductions. First off, uh, I want to give a big shout out to Mage and Press, makers of 5th edition supplements. You can check them out at mageandpress.com, store.mageandpress.com. You should also check out Found Familiar, a uh, great coffee company that I am typing, I don't know where. There we go. Uh, found familiar, you can use Wandering DM to get 10% off your purchases. They make amazing coffee. Uh, and then, uh, of course, you should check out Roll20, which is the platform that we use here for all of our games on the Wandering Society. Thank you. Um, and uh, also check out Artalsorian Games, makers of uh, The Witcher, Mechdun, uh, Castle Falkenstein, Cyberpunk... All of that good stuff, uh, you should check them out at artalsorian.com. And of course, uh, you should absolutely take a detour, maybe during our break though, uh, to go check out Die Hard Dice and uh, see what they've just released. They have some awesome new sets that were just released. You might want to check them out. They are based on... Um, I was going to say something, but I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. So you should just go and check it out before I announce something that might not be out just yet. So that said, let's go around the table, introduce our gu guests, our players. Long week, y'all, long week. I mean, we're kind of like guests on your channel, kind of, kind of, sort of. Yeah. Um, Simon but and friends. Yeah, that's, that's the reason why it's not called Wandering DM anymore. <laughs> I don't want it to be my channel. So we'll enough, start with the enough. person to my left on the overlay. We're going to go around clockwise, beginning with Hannah. Hello. Hello. I am Hannah. Animation Art on Twitter, Animation Studios, pretty much everywhere else. 
And um, I use she, her pronouns. And in this campaign, I play Marceline Olson, who is a uh, soap opera actress who also uses she, her pronouns. Let's have some fun. Up next, we have Anino. Oh, uh, how's it going, everyone? My name's Anino. I use he, him pronouns. And uh, I play Chow Vong Tang. <clears throat> Chow Tong Vang, excuse me. You... Um, also uses he, him pronouns, and uh, runs a uh, weed shop. And that's it. We're going to skip over our GM, if you don't mind. We'll keep you for last. Um, and we'll go over to Jim. Greetings, humanity. I'm Jim Ryan. Um, I, am, uh, I use he, him pronouns. I use uh, other doc on both... Uh, uh, on on Twitch, which uh, you'll you'll may see me in chat from time to time, and uh, I am playing Raymond Knudsen, um, the the uh, very kindly uh, troubleshooter uh, of the supernatural for Monoc Securities. And last but not least, in our players, Leona, who are you? Hello, I am Leona. You can find me on Twitter at the Leona Maple. Uh, I use she, her pronouns, as does my favorite quirky, everybody's favorite Desi girl, card shuffling cardomancer, Maya, uh, who is who I am playing today. And I just realized that I never introduce myself when we do this. Um, <laughs> I, I'm playing James Robert Brown, the uh, perpetually broke magical cab driver. And... To also introduce herself, but to also take the mic and uh, get our new case going, is our illustrious GM, Alyssa. Hello. Hi, everybody. My name is Alyssa. My pronouns are she, her, and I play everyone not listed on this overlay. <laughs> is the cab magical? Not anymore. <laughs> um, my cab, got tossed my up cab, with the yeah, kind of, kind of. Uh, I learned not to piss off Chow, and um, and I am out of a ride. But perhaps I can enchant my cab next one if I get one one day. Perhaps. <laughs> so, um, I'm saying you're gonna need a familiar sooner or later. So. <laughs> Previously, on Spare Change. While Marceline, Maya, and James rode into town with Bjorn to meet Patrick Hawkinson, the former team captain of the South St. Paul Pack, Chow and Ray went down the road with Pocket riding along to visit the home of Mr. Erickson Petersburg, from whom the Fang family leases their farm. They learned that not only was Mr. Petersburg a Monarch Securities customer who had sprung for the state-of-the-art home security system with a panic room in his basement, but also had the farmhouse heavily warded with magic and incidentally owned a large dog. When Ray flashed his company ID at the security camera, they were able to speak with Erickson over the intercom, but the reclusive land baron declined to come to the door. He said he'd had no problem with the film crew, but had explicitly requested not to be disturbed between February 14th through 18th, and the crew had respectfully obliged. Meanwhile, the rest of the party was making awkward small talk with Patrick, who confessed that since learning their old coach, Andre Kopecki, had moved back to the Twin Cities, some of the gang had fallen back into old habits, partying and roughhousing and becoming unnecessarily aggressive after a recent game. He'd also mentioned a confrontation with one Chad Hansen, whom Coach Kopecki had barred from the team for poor sportsmanship and for harassing his daughter Chandler. James snuck a peek at Patrick through his true side shades and clogged a faint magical aura, though no stronger than a minor talent. The party then excused themselves and with Patrick's direction drove to Chad Hansen's house, where they invited him to the set to film a hockey scene. Chad accepted, 
And while they were dressing the set, Ray began to question him, which led to Chad donning a wolf tooth amulet and transforming in front of everybody. Marceline used her fey magic to stop the hex and wolf in his tracks, and James used the Zamboni to trap Chad in one of the hockey goals where Ray relieved him of his cursed amulet. Maya then called her mentor, Chanda Devi, who contacted someone from the White Council to take the Hex and Wolf into custody. After Chad went on a whole monologue about how he'd uh, been passed over for a promotion by Mr. Erickson Petersburg and decided to cause some trouble and in the hopes of getting it blamed on Mr. Petersburg's dog, blah, blah, blah. And then Chow punched him out. (laughs) Four weeks have passed since then. You've had some downtime. You've had some time to try to dig up dirt on Mr. and Mrs. Kopecky and their sports cult, um, as well as their possible connection with whomever has been posing as the late Andre Uh, I mean, the late Adrian Belmont vampire. So, what have you all been up to in the intervening four weeks since February's full moon? I can go. Um, Go for it. So, James has been unsuccessfully trying to uh, find a new car that he could turn into his cab or, or like Uber, because I guess he doesn't really um, work for a cab company. Say. I was going to say, is there a cab company that's going to be very upset about the vehicle damage or is it just James? No, <laughs> it's, it's pretty much just me. Um, this uh, car, by the way, that was wrecked uh, by Chow was also... The uh, first home James ever had in Minneapolis when he moved in years ago after running away from home. Um, but yeah, so he he spent maybe like the majority of that month trying to find a car. And if if we were in a uh, a TV show, you would just see a montage of red stamps upon files just denied, 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 denied every time because uh, he's flat broke. There is also um, something strange that might have happened uh, during that month in the fact that uh, James is starting to have the feeling that he's being followed. He, he hasn't spoken of it to anyone until probably tonight um, because he wasn't sure, but he's getting uh, the, the sinking suspicion that, yeah, there's, there's, there's people, there's people around and he doesn't know if they're good guys or bad guys. Um, and so he would have also spent a bit of his time um, boarding up his apartment or at least having having the material to board up his apartment should something happen. Um, and he's been uh, he's been toying with a few concoctions that we'll discover over the course of this case and perhaps the next cases. Okay. Do I have to call on someone to go next? (laughs) I was hoping to hear from the others so that I can tie it in because Maya's kind of just like... Maya's whole big thing has been just like research, research, research as much as she can. I just think with so much that was like kind of like revealed the last time, she's kind of very curious to know about the witch coven of Mrs. Kopecky and how, uh, you know, Goose Girl kind of gets all wrapped up in all this and, uh, <laughs> you know, what's all this got to do with Adrian Belmont, who is uh, still alive? Not alive? Dead? What? Huh? Who knows? Like, it was just so much, like, going on and she's just kind of like, okay, I don't know and I don't know what to do other than, like, attempt to Google library archives, like, research 
books, ask Astrid, just, you know, ask anybody she can, really, who might know something okay. and try to dig up leads. Okay. Well, speaking of Goose Girl, did uh, Chow ever call her? Or is he still sitting on that number he thinks is fake? You're muted. I would probably say that uh, he did not call her, but uh, he isn't hard to find, so... True. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? <laughs> You are also muted. I'll try and talk for a moment if I can uh, figure out how mute how, how the mute button works. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I uh, I think so. Ray uh, came to a a a a, a terrible realization um, not too long after he got back, and uh, that is that uh, he he missed his uh, family family's holiday gathering. Um, and, uh, it's, uh, this is primarily his father's side of the family. Um, because, I mean, he sees his mother from time to time because she also works for Monarch. Um, and, but, so, but she is also incredibly busy. So it is, it is difficult to, 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 uh, actually be able to schedule time with her. Um, and, uh, so, uh, it, uh, it happens from time to time whenever they can. Uh, but, uh. His, uh, his father's side of the family is very large, um, and uh, his extended family. I mean, originally, the, the, most of them are in Norway, but there's still a decent number of them over in, uh, in uh, Minnesota, um, up in Duluth. Um, okay. And uh, so he had to, because he was unfortunately late for the family gathering, he had to kind of make some time to go up there and at least try to see who he could. Um, his father is a uh, is a um, currently unlicensed physician um, <laughs> who okay. uh, somewhat services the supernatural community. Um, sure. And uh, unfortunately, his 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 family is involved uh, uh, with another branch of the family who have uh, who are also uh, fairly large, and they're up there in Duluth. Um, who have. Uh, a lot of things going on, a lot of irons in the fire uh, with respect to the movement of things into and out of the, that port. Um, and uh, so it's one of those things where he tries. See, the family gathering is usually a safe thing, safer thing for him because that's a holiday thing. Nobody's working. Right. <laughs> Unfortunately... The thing is, it's uh, he sometimes if he goes up there when it's uh, not a family gathering, uh, he he has to try to be careful not to be sucked into their BS like like he was when he was uh, a teenager. Um, and uh, the uh, the long and the short of it is that he had to fight a demon, uh, <laughs> basically, because um, there's a rival family that likes to summon demons, and so that that he kind of. Every now and then he has to deal with that. Um, and nice. you know, one of those things where it's, it's an unfortunate thing because he knows that uh, it, it's like the, the, the family, the holiday times, holiday gatherings are the only times that he knows that when his family is pleased to see him, it's just to see him and not because of wanting to uh, make use of him. Um, and so he kind of had to, had to do that bit of penance uh, for, not, for not attending the family gathering when he went up. Um, so he went ahead and he took care of that and uh, then, then hightailed it back to uh, Minneapolis as soon as he could. But he was happy to see his father, <laughs> who, was, who, who he sometimes needs to see to reaffirm his, uh, his belief that, they're, that, that, that people are meant to be basically good. Tangled with a, a bunch of not so good people recently, <laughs> it must be yeah. a, a bit hard on the morale. Yeah, he's trying to he's trying to 
keep that childlike optimism going and we'll see how soon it is before it <laughs> it uh, drains away <laughs> And Marceline, any anything new and interesting developing on her end? Marceline doesn't have any sort of contact with Chandler or anybody who might be involved in that whole uh, coven situation. So thus far, I think mostly she's just taken on a uh, like a producing role on the film that Bjorn has been in and has been hanging around the set to uh, have sort of creative oversight on the goings on and make sure no other weird individuals come lurking around trying to bite people. (laughs) Good deal. Um, I think it's fairly safe to say the filming continues without further incident. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, yeah, you could probably get to know a little bit about a um, little bit more about Bjorn's friendship with um, with Raimi, the possible vampire. Sometimes he there are there are certain things that Bjorn will like just talk very openly about. And then sometimes you can tell he's like getting close to sharing personal information. So he'll kind of talk around it a little because mm-hmm. Raimi is not present to defend themselves. <laughs> That's fair. So and we've already discovered that Bjorn is a terrible liar. So he's just trying to avoid talking about certain My things. My poor boy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's so sincere. <laughs> he's just a, just a big old himbo. <laughs> so anyway. Um, Maya, do you have any particular questions that you would like to ask Astrid? Um, or anyone else on the NPC list who is visible is fair game. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Uh, hmm. It's a good question. I'm not sure, honestly. <clears throat> um, okay. Yeah. I'm not sure. I think she's kind of mostly been digging and I don't know if she's actually been able to like come up with much like you know she's probably tried to look like look up a little bit more information about um maybe she should ask Astrid about the Kopeckis and she if Astrid or Astrid's grandmother knew anything about them you know okay let us have Astrid make a roll What do we think? Contacts? I think that sounds like a contact role. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, unfortunately, it does not look like um, Astrid has uh, actually heard of the Kopeckis. Well. Hmm. Again, I mean, that's, that's, one. that's all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was worth a try. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think she's just kind of poking around, seeing what she can find. Maybe, like, try, like, kind of, like, I don't know, asking at some, like, some old haunts. I don't don't have anything specific in mind, but, like, you know, I'm thinking about, like, that aspect of, like, the minor underground reputation slash Twitter famous and doesn't even have Twitter. And, like, you know, (laughs) where, you know, she could, like, kind of, like, cast out a net into, like, kind of, like, the more unknown internet okay. side of the world and kind of see what dig- what comes up, but she's not expecting much to kind of float to the surface, you know? I would you take know? a contact roll from you. <laughs> okay, works for me. 
Um, and because I called upon the aspect, do I get any yes. bonus? <laughs> Do I get, yeah, do I get one may, for that? Yeah, You may spend that fate point and take a plus two, or you can wait uh, until after you roll and mm. see if you if you need it. All right, I will. I will wait. I will wait. I will wait. Um. <laughs> That's a mediocre. Um. You want to go for that plus two? Yeah, let's do it. Um, otherwise, you could do just do a reroll if you want. Mm, let's 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 do the plus two. I'm not sure if okay. I'm gonna. Okay. Actually, actually, let's let's do the reroll. Okay. <laughs> do I get another? I get one more dice for that, right? Um, you no? just or do I just um, reroll? You spend the fate point, and and you can either add two to your result, or you can completely reroll. Okay. Um. Hmm. And it's because I have it at fair, which is why I'm like. Will it make a difference? I don't know which is the more likely option. I think I think I will not reroll, and I'll just say uh, I'll just take the plus two, and that way. Yeah. Okay. All right. That way we know for sure it's a two. So, so you're trying to find out about um, Rebecca Kopecki and her book club. Yes, the book club. Um, you can easily enough doing some Googling and poking around on the internet, find some like old articles about um, the sports scene that um, she and her husband were involved in. Um, you do also, you also have um, Chandler's contact information if you want to because she exchanged numbers with Ray um, when he gave her his True. card. So you mm. could you could talk to her, <laughs> see if she knows anything. Um, true, true, true. I don't know. Kind of a little bit nervous about just being like, tell me about your parents. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> we kind of ended up on a bad note with her last time. Like, yeah, I'm not 100%. Awkward. Yeah, I'm not 100% <laughs> sure my just like popping up there would be a good idea. So I think she's going to avoid that. She's just kind of, yeah. you know. Um, I will say, um, if you happen to glance at your conversation uh, with Astrid, you can kind of see that dot, dot, dot typing thing has been going on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Astrid's about to send you a message uh she will she will see the dot 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 and she will wait <laughs> okay so you get you get a text from her and it's basically like hey i was wondering if you wanted to try this new indian restaurant that opened up near me i want to know if it's any good and you seem like you would have the expert opinion you can invite the team if you want it's totally not a date but it's totally a date kind of message <laughs> you know it's a little awkward <laughs> oh it's so cute um my Kind of like looks at it. It's like, is it a date? Is it a date? Oh my god, this might be a date. I'm gonna assume it's a date. I'm gonna assume it's a date. Uh, and we'll immediately text her back and be like, yeah, totally, I'll be there. Um, yeah. And does not mention it to anyone else. <laughs> uh, around the same time as you're sending your um, your reply, you also get a message from one of your classmates. Ooh. Uh, all right, what do what do they say? Yeah, she is not having a good day at all. Hmm. Hmm. Um. Uh, she just found out that her boyfriend passed away. Oh no! Oh. Yeah, and she's pretty distraught because. They recently had a big fight and they were going to try to kind of work things out. And now she feels really bad because things ended on a really bad note. Mm. And she's just distraught. Oh, no. Um, Maya's cultural gut instinct is to immediately go over to her place. Like, that's so, just that's just how she rolls. Yeah. So um, her name is Navi. Okay. 
And she is down in the vanilla humans tab at the moment. Got it. At the moment. And <laughs> at the moment. Everybody dun, starts dun, in the dun, vanilla dun. humans tab or they move up to the persons of interest tab until we find out if there's anything more about them interesting. Okay, yeah. Um Maya will Maya will what Maya will go over to Navi's place. Okay. You know, go go sit with her, spend some time with her, check in on her, you know, kinda kinda Yeah. Doesn't know what happened, doesn't matter, she'll just be there for her, you know. All right. So um her her Deceased boyfriend Chase is also in the list now. He should be visible. You have probably met him, at least in passing. Oh, yeah, that guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Am I like, am I like sad? No. I mean, I'm sad for Navi. Not really sad about the ex boyfriend. Just, 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 just sing. Just saying. Yeah. Um, but all of that aside, it's still awful. Like, you know, this is this is a young guy, and so she she'll go over to Navi and like, you know, give her a hug, spend spend like a spend like an afternoon or however long Navi really mm -hmm. needs, like at, at her place yep. and you know. Yep, she will she just totally like pours out the entire sob story and probably some sobbing. Um uh they kinda had a big public fight at the restaurant you're supposed to go to with Astrid. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah, he was kind of like um ogling one of the waitresses and <laughs> she got mad and stormed out. And then the next morning she found out he was dead. Just like that? Like Yep. What? Heart attack? Yeah. What? Um, according uh, to the report, he died of natural causes, but that just means he wasn't, like, obviously murdered. <laughs> he could have been a heart attack, but he was, by all accounts, young and reasonably fit, so. Shit, sorry, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> hmm. Do I get the feeling that there's something extra weird here that I'm just like, you know? Yes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's 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 my that was my big fear. Yeah. All right. Your your weird sense is tingling. Do do you, do you know where he went after y'all had a fight? No. Mm. Went home, ate the ice cream, cried myself to sleep. The next morning, I had a message from his parents. I wonder where the hell he went then. Hmm. I'm not seeing too many leads here, like out of character, other than like potentially checking out the restaurant. Um, okay, I guess Maya will kind of like, you know, when she's, when Snivy's kind of like, you know, once she's kind of spent some time with her, kind of yeah, go and um, check out the restaurant. I think she's going to poke around the back yeah, of the parents, restaurant. His parents just like found him at, at his house. Like he died in his sleep or something. Hmm. Okay. Sheesh. All right. Well, call me if you need anything. Okay. Thanks, Maya. You got it. Um. Yeah. I think Maya's gonna want to like go poke around the restaurant, but like not be obvious about it. Like just on her own. Like you know, hood up. Kind of a thing. Like in. I'm assuming it's like dusk, probably. By the time she goes to do it? Yeah. So, you go to the restaurant. 
Um, you see the hostess is um, like a tall, kind of athletic looking uh, Indian woman. Um, her name, name tag says Preeti. Mm -hmm. um, you also see um, waiting on tables is Tessa Meyer. Cool. Um, she'll kind of she'll kind of wave at Tessa and be like, "Hey, Tessa, nice to see you." Um, Hi, Maya. Hey, uh, I didn't didn't know you worked here. I just started. <laughs> After I disappeared for two months, I had to look for a new job. Yeah, don't blame you. Um, hey, listen, kind of a kind of a weird question. Um, yeah. and she'll she'll describe. Um, forgot her name. One second, sorry. By the way, Preeti is very pretty. Um, she'll describe Navi um, and um, and and the and the ex boyfriend. She'll be like, "Were you working that night at all?" Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. do, do you do you remember what happened? N Navi's uh, a friend of mine. Yeah, I remember that guy. He was sitting on everybody. Like sitting on everybody, hitting on everybody. Oh, oh, got it. Um. Yeah, that, that kind of sounds like him. What happened? Like, uh, they got into a fight, I hear. Yeah, I don't know what started it, but I can hazard a guess. Well, yeah, the uh, obvious. All of a sudden, things got really heated at their table, and she got up and left. And then I think a little while later, he went out side and then I didn't see him again. He didn't come back in? No, I don't think so. Um, he talked to the hostess a little bit. Um, I think he was getting the check. Like she came over because obviously things were getting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to figure out like where where he he, he went like I don't know if you know, but like his parents found him dead the next morning. Oh my god, that's terrible. Of natural causes, no like dying to sleep. He was like he was very much alive last time I saw him. Yeah, I, I figured. Um, hmm. Does do you think the hostess knows anything? Breathy, right? That's her name? Yeah. Um, okay. She she might. Okay. I don't know. Um well, do you mind if I talk to her? I don't mind. Okay. <laughs> I just work here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fair, 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 fair. Um, and she'll kind of like try and flag down Preeti to kind of ask Preeti a couple of questions. Kind of, again, same thing. Describe the whole situation. Um, mention that like the boyfriend is now deceased. And okay. she's kind of wondering what Preeti might have overheard anything that might indicate what was going on or... She looks very concerned. She's like, that's terrible. Yeah. I'm sorry. I can't help you. I don't know where he went after. Did you overhear anything at the restaurant? Like anyone that was like particularly mad at him or like? No, I'm afraid not. I, I overheard their argument. He seemed like kind of a jerk if you ask me but yeah he kind of was okay hmm hmm <laughs> hmm um i think maya's next move would be to like kind of like head out from the restaurant and like text astrid uh and just ask her if she would be at all able to like she'll, she'll she'll frame it this way she'll she'll text and she'll say young guy died of natural quote unquote natural causes overnight 
was fighting with his girlfriend the night before in a restaurant and hitting on a bunch of people. Um, feels kind of weird to me. Not sure if you're able to like help me maybe dig up some clues? Question mark. Also, it's at the restaurant we're supposed to hang out at. Okay. Do you want me to meet you there? Uh, or... yeah. Why not? <laughs> Maya's just like I'm, Maya straight up. Also, then replies with, "I'm straight up shooting in the dark. I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing." Okay. So, are you just are you gonna get a table? Or are you just yeah. gonna kind of wait in the reception area? Yeah, might as well might as well get a table. Okay. She's not quite sure what else to do. Um, she, I think she'll she'll text the group and she'll just say, uh, "Don't know if it's really super worth mentioning." Um, not quite sure what's going on. Just feels kind of weird. Um, a friend of mine's asshole boyfriend died suddenly of quote unquote natural causes overnight. Not quite sure what's going on. Still kind of digging into it. Maybe nothing. Maybe something. Don't know. Um, my condolences, but specif specifying natural causes is sus, as the youth say. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty sus. Don't know what else to do. I, like, do I talk to the coroner's office? I died, like, I... Then she just sends a bunch of question marks because she's just like, no clue. Um, I'll, I'll send just morgue heist question mark question mark question mark. <laughs> morgue heist. Oh, God. Um. That, that, that. Maybe talk to them first question mark. Them who? I wanted to morgue. talk to... <laughs> talk oh. to the morgue. <laughs> Can any one of us talk to the dead? Astrid. Oh. She's on her also, way to the restaurant. Mr. Knudsen. <laughs> oh. What? Um... Did you, did you ask that on the chat? Can, yeah, I, yeah, can yeah. anyone talk to the dead? <laughs> yeah, because you said talk to the morgue, and yeah. so James answers, yeah. but can anyone, can any one of us talk to the dead? Dot, dot, dot. Maybe. <laughs> it's a date. Oh? Oh. Yes. We could we could go talk to that boyfriend. Weird that happened. If Raymond truly can speak, as he said, maybe. I mean, so y'all are gonna go Morgan. I'm gonna stay here with Astrid. Yeah. Okay. I mean, weren't you weren't you saying you were going to the restaurant? Yeah, at the restaurant, waiting for Astrid. Then don't cancel on our account. Aye, aye. Food, greater sign, dead people. <laughs> Sounds good. This works. <laughs> and I mean, the offer, James's offer is open to everyone else. If anyone wants to spend like a Saturday <laughs> night at a moor. We'd have to figure out where his ghost would be hanging around if it is. Basically, he'll, he'll send in tech. I have no if we idea. want to talk to him. Otherwise, we can also talk to the the coroner or somebody over there if we want to find out anything about the physical side of things. Um... Could I use my lore to see if James knows sort of the not the in, the complete ins and outs of like ghosts, but at least enough to know to get an idea of like it, would his ghost be 
in the spot where he died or somewhere else. Yeah. Okay, because Simon doesn't know in the Dresden universe, like, the rules about ghosts. Um, well, let's go. Let's go. Six. I know everything. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Um, honestly, it kind of depends on the ghost. Um, since it's relatively fresh, he might be hanging around near his body, uh, or he might be hanging around near his home, or he might be hanging around near the place where he died if something particularly tragic or weird happened. As far as anybody knows, he died in his home. So, so we'd have two locations to check, the morgue and... Yeah. Yeah. Then, I mean, Ray, you, you died. Mm. There's so many different, uh, so many different options here. Um... Morgue I mean, would probably, we'd probably will. There may be a, a number of spirits depending on how many uh, clients they currently have at the morgue right now, as it were. Uh, how many occupants, tenants? Yes, that's the word I was looking for. How many tenants they currently have? Um, so he might be hanging around, you know. But uh, yeah, if not, then we'd have to figure out how to talk to his family, and it might be good. To, yeah. Depends on if we wanted. Which which level of talky we want to do first, I guess. Do we want to bother his family first, or do we want to well, I mean, bother Arner slash Mortician? First? The Mortician, it would almost feel more... Um, like, we'd have a reason to be there, in a way. I mean, you working for Monarch Security. Uh, yes, we could um, try to do that. That could be like a... We could pretend it's an actual investigation, and not just like the perfect date for a Saturday night. Um, That's fair. Whereas if we go at his house, like, unless you have a Ghostbuster costume handy. <laughs> My costume is, no matter what I'm wearing, it is always a Ghostbuster costume. Um, I will I'll follow get your lead. Out with a little jumpsuit on. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> we just sort of will will check with uh, John Marceline. Marceline is like, you folks want? <laughs> hey, I think we're he we're hitting up the morgue first. Want to come? <laughs> Question mark. I think you have a wrong number. That's <laughs> 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 funny, it's the group. <laughs> it looks like the same group chat number to me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Also, how, I would. <clears throat> That's true. How how are you intending to get into the morgue? Are you gonna just walk in and ask to look at the dead bodies? Dot dot dot. Yes? Question mark. I guess I guess I have nothing else to do then. I'll come with. Smile, thumbs up. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Does Cal want to go and hang out with dead bodies or anything? He doesn't answer, but he's going to actually be there already because he made a weed <laughs> delivery to the coroner. <laughs> That's awesome. I fucking love him. <laughs> cool. So yeah, yeah. So now Ray will head over uh, to the uh, the morgue first. All right. So, uh, yeah, so you get to the, um, you get to the morgue. <laughs> um, the medical examiner is Dr. Ariadne Stone. Um, Chow is already there. She's down in the Vanilla Humans, um, if you would like to see a photo. I, and I, I just threw that in together on the fly. So this, it just says medical examiner in her bio. Uh, apparently, she's also a customer of Chow's, and he's already there. <laughs> and... You know, you hear her saying something like, uh, thanks, you're a lifesaver, and looking, you know, very appreciative. The sort of appreciative that just goes over Chow's head. I mean, it's just business. Chow is very professional. So <laughs> eventually she looks up and sees she has guests and she's like, oh, hello, can I help you? Uh, uh, good evening. Yes, we're uh, looking into, we've been asked to look into something. Um, I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm with Monarch. And uh, he'll go ahead and pull out his ID card. Uh, and uh, there's, we, un we, we understand that uh, was recently uh, that, uh, that you recently had a Chase Lindgren uh, come in that uh, is recently deceased. And uh, someone has asked us to uh, look in and see about um, just if, if you have, uh, if, if the report has been made available. Um, and if possible, to uh, to take a quick look at the remains. Of course, of course. Terrible tragedy. Young, fit. He seems to have died in his sleep. I'm afraid there's not much I can tell you. The tox screening came back clean. Mm -hmm. The only thing nice. I noticed was high levels of oxytocin in his system it suggests he died happy hmm. interesting um i'm not as familiar with the uh with the uh if i i'm trying to remember the uh, uh overdosing on oxytocin is uh, what the it, 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 could that have contributed it's not Really, oxytocin is a hormone that the body naturally produces uh, after exercise and other types of activity. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Uh, so, but uh, there was an abundance of it, so there was a... Yes. Uh, okay, understand. Um, and, uh, so nothing unusual with uh, you uh, said... Yeah, it uh, it, the only thing strange, it doesn't seem like he was at the gym when he passed. His parents said they found him in his bed. Mm. It wasn't the... Uh, There's no wasn't sign the, of illness or injury. Yeah. It wasn't the apnea, was it? It was. It, does he, did he have uh, your no. knowledge? No. Yes, deep, deep apnea? No. And, uh, 
So just like a heart attack? As far as I can tell. Huh. Interesting. Uh, it, 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 and you, Ray will just sort of look around to see if anyone else has any questions before asking if um, we want to see the body. No, I think the questions that James would have all all revolve around the body itself. Okay. Yeah. Like, no, no. like as in as in I, I want to look at him with my glasses. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean by by this point, uh uh, Ray, Ray, I was seeing. Ch well, you know, it was kind of, sort of. We will have waved at Chow as well, so the uh, so so the examiner will know that he that 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 he knows Chow, um, but uh, will be sort of so, so doesn't mind him being included in the uh, conversation or anything. So that way, you know, you get people in. Uh, but they'll say, you know? ah, could uh, could uh, could we could we perhaps view the remains?" Certainly. Oh, so she pulls out the drawer. Oh, okay, so we're we're already in there. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, once once we're actually in there, I'm gonna be looking around to see if there are any ghosts in here. Okay. That match the description. Probably I'll look at the body real quick and see if like any any of you. Look at, yeah. It's like <laughs> crowded. Guy, that kind of thing. <laughs> Chow is just gonna peer over uh, my shoulder, look at the guy, and just say. Oh, that is the absolute epitome of white mediocrity. When you say probably Ray has, uh, while, while others are looking at the body, Ray has probably stepped away and is now appears to, he's not, since the, the examiner is still in here, he's trying to be quiet about it, but he's probably just sort of okay. muttering. Or something apparently just as though he's talking to someone. We he's just sort of now just sort of has anyone seen of, of, <laughs> of her report? So you can like pretend to be looking over that yeah. while actually looking over it. <laughs> yeah. He's just now talking to ghosts, trying to I'm sure there are some here. Uh he's so just trying to figure out if the if that one is um, here or where he might be. Ghosts here. There's a couple. Mm, not this one. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 if you want, we can let people do body-related stuff first. If you if you want to uh, sure. come back to me with it. Yeah. Uh, so James is looking at the body with the the shades. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you look, and this is the most uh, the most vanilla corpse you have ever seen. <laughs> there is no so there's no like illusion on him that would hide like a or a, no a brand nope. or a, okay nope huh hmm. I take the glasses off. I'll turn to the rest, including Marceline, which, again, I don't see her with the glasses. Okay. It's clear. So he died happy in his sleep. After doing exercises, I 
This Are this there any marks on the body. Like hey, keys. Can I just roll an investigation? Like hey keys. Sure. Like sure. <laughs> so I forgot to mention that uh Chow has been taking uh criminal investigation courses at the community college. Just because okay. it felt kind of useless in the past uh uh, okay. He, he's also going to use his uh, enhanced sen sense of smell and uh, you know, see if he can catch anything specific. Okay. We'll, we'll just get a plus one there. Okay. <laughs> a five. Superb. Um, you don't see um, any marks on the body per se. Um, there is like a little, like a very faint shock of uh, like gray near his temples on one side. Um, you don't know if that was always there because that's just the way his hair grows or if it's there because he's a dude in his 30s and doesn't think he needs just for men or <laughs> or what. But underneath the sort of antiseptic smell of the morgue, uh, you catch a faint hint of jasmine jasmine is it like a uh, perfume or a lotion kind of smell or is it just you know what he was rolling around in some tea it smells like jasmine blossoms oh uh Despite the Lysol used uh, here, I kind of detect notes of uh, jasmine. Really? Yeah. I don't wear and... any. I mean, it, it's a little hard with the aqua velvet that's emanating from uh, James over there, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's... <laughs> called class look it up <laughs> sure if you're like 60 uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's right james is an old man <laughs> but he's not he's in his 50s he's not 60 yet yeah not not that old but good man oh yeah Oh. I, I mean, did you say his uh, girlfriend was Southeast Asian? So, I guess it could have just come from that, but I'm not sure why it would linger. Might want to ask her too about this. Weird graying temples thing. Seems to be a little young for that, but uh, can't be due to stress because look, he's a white dude. What could possibly bother him? I don't know. It doesn't appear to have been bleached. Doesn't certainly look like a Reed Richards kind of guy, so. Uh, 
Jasmine use for anything magical? That isn't I'm... weird. Mm. Um, James is is thinking back on on knowledge you may have picked up over the years. Um, because he's interested in two things. One, like Chow said, uh, magical uses for Jasmine. Which he mm -hmm. would also be interested in because jasmine rice is rather easy to acquire. Uh, so is jasmine tea. But also, do any beings from the Never Never smell of jasmine? Because I mean, That's oxytocin, oxytocin, died in his sleep, kind of happy. That sort of screaming succubus. Maybe, or or something else, but uh, yeah, he's gonna rack his brain over that, uh, and we're gonna go okay. for a lore check. Okay. Great, great. Um, Jasmine um, has been used in a lot of cultures for medicinal purposes, um, for anxiety relief, to promote a healthy sleep, uh -oh. um, as an aphrodisiac. We lost Leona. Okay. Uh, let me just send her a message. But you, you can keep going. I'll, um... I mean, right now, what's happening is that Raymond exists in two different dimensions. <laughs> yeah. As for um, creatures so sorry. from the never never. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you just repeat? You said healing, aphrodisiac, and um, for um, gastrointestinal health, for okay. to promote sleep, reduce anxiety. Oh, anxiety. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then the creatures. Yeah, there is one thing that you may have heard of that um, is supposed to smell like jasmine. And you are kind of, you're on the right track. Okay. There is a creature in Desi folklore mm -hmm. called a Mohini. Hey, the owner's back. That is said to smell like jasmine and um, to um seduce men and uh, feed on their life force. Um, I'll turn to out my phone and I'll text it to Maya. Um, ciao. There's a lot of jasmine that's used in healing. Not just magical, but also mundane. But there's also this creature, a mohini. And I'll just type mohini question mark in the group chat as well. Um, that smells of jasmine and uh, would do exactly what happened to... Uh, Little Timmy over here.
I feel like Maya knows enough about South Asian myth and lore that she's just going to reply back, well, shit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, <laughs> on that note, I think that's a good place to take a quick a break. break. <laughs> well, cool. We'll take uh, like five, five to ten minutes. Stick around, everyone. We will be right back with um, the, the more Mohini problems. <laughs> I guess because we don't know where where it is. So, be right back, everyone.
When the sun starts growing colder and the dark starts getting bold, you don't know what the cards are holding and you think you are to fall. Transform your destiny. You've been down on your luck. Oh, but I'm not giving up. Sometimes just enough is all you need. When the sky flashes a warning of the struggles to be born, you gotta hold out till the morning. So you turn to face the storm Let the shadows fall Let the sirens call Underneath it all I'm whispering Let your troubles roll away Into my soul gates I won't look away I'm listening I got faith to spare Changes in the air and if you dare transform your destiny You've been down on your luck But I'm not giving up Sometimes just enough is all you need Sometimes just enough is all you need And we are back! Everyone, hello! So before we went to break, the party was investigating the mysterious death of Maya's classmate's boyfriend, who was kind of a jerk. But... They're looking into it for a friend. Um... Maya was waiting for Astrid to show up at the Coconut Grove restaurant where they're supposed to have a date, which is the same restaurant where Maya's friend Navi and her uh, boyfriend Chase had a big fight right before he died. And the rest of the party went to the morgue to look at the body. Um, they talked to the medical examiner and she could only say that he died of natural causes he, and he had high levels of oxytocin in his system, but no sign of illness or injury. Um, Chow detected the scent of jasmine and James started thinking succubus and tried to think of creatures of that nature that smell like jasmine and they have potentially narrowed it down to a mohini. A seductive uh, creature who feeds on the life force of humans, not mohini, the divine avatar. <laughs> Regardless, so. we're in trouble. Yes. <laughs> so Maya, you get this message and you say, oh shit, and your date shows up. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, you look concerned. Oh, 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 well, remember how I said dead boyfriend thing yeah. that I was kind of digging into? Mm -hmm. Well, um, do you know anything about Mohini? Uh, like a like a like a like a succubus type of situation. I, uh, I mean, I've heard of succubi. I don't know that I've encountered one that I'm aware of. Well, good because they're not great. Um, but uh, we should we should we should eat we should eat. Um, and then I might need to take you somewhere. Because if we're dealing with the Mohini, then we kind of, we might have to do something about that. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. But Do you feel like you can eat right now? Or should we, cause we could do this later if. 
Can we do this later? Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it'd be weird to just kind of have dinner with you right now. Or we could we could do it. I don't I don't know. I'm really bad at this. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> okay. Cool. The restaurant's probably not going anywhere. <laughs> Chances are it's probably not. Um but uh I know. I'll get us. I'll get us. I know what I'll do. Uh, and she will she will turn to the the waiter and, and she will ask uh, for some let's see. Two orders of Pakora to go um as well as hmm, uh let's see. Gajika halwa for uh, Astrid, and then uh, she'll also order a separate one, like a separate little, a separate little container, uh, which seems like it's for herself, but it might be for someone else. Um, yeah, so a little, a little carrot sweet treat, and uh, and uh, and and something to nibble on uh, for the road to go containers. Okay, um, yeah. So um, Tessa will bring you your to go order, and uh, you can continue your investigation. Perfecto. Um, Maya is gonna call up Janda and find out where she's at and if she can meet up with her. She's at home. Perfecto. All right. Uh, well, Astrid, you are in for a treat. You're gonna get to meet uh, Janda Devi, who uh, kind of taught me a fair bit of what I know. You know, kind of, kind of guided me around all of this stuff when I first started. Kind of, you know figuring out that there's more to the world than just what's in front of our faces and, you know, became a side hustling cardamancer who didn't know what she was getting herself into and Shanda definitely, you know, saved my bet a couple of times. So yeah. Being the mentor. Yep. Getting serious. I guess when you put it that way. Um, <laughs> she's a little dramatic, eccentric, but she's pretty cool. Who I think I like her. You should have seen my grandma back in the day. I, I mean, true. Show you pictures. <laughs> you should. Also, I mean, I think that's just a practitioner trait at this point. Like, I mean, J James wanders around with pasta in his jacket. Like, oh god, Astrid, you don't even want to know what happened to that movie set. There Ugh. are certain expectations if you advertise yourself as a a practitioner of magic. I heard there's a guy in Chicago who actually put himself in the yellow pages under wizard. Well, that's a decision. Yeah. <laughs> I think I prefer my cards. They're less messy. I'd rather not get pasta all over myself personally. Anyways, let's go. Yes, I'd rather have the pasta inside. <laughs> okay, so you go to see Tanda. Uh, what is the rest of the party doing? Have I managed to make contact with any spirits? Are there any, any dead people around here? You said there were some dead people? How would you like to attempt to make contact with spirits? Well. What does that look uh, like for you? Oh, uh, yeah. When they're Where not the, just, uh, you know, wandering around uh, being poltergeisty like, um, like Miss Muriel Johnson. Yeah. Um, because I figure that there, there would be some sort of in the area, but yeah, so per the ghost speaker thing, um, it's, uh, I do kind of have this instinctual thing where, um, I can see them and they actually can also see me in the sense that they know that I'm a conduit, um, uh, of sorts, uh, <laughs> at least that I can communicate with them. Um, and, uh, they, and so they... It's kind of one of those things where I just sort of uh, is looking around, open up, and if I happen to spot any of them, I just sort of will wave, and then that'll kind of probably, I would assume, be like, oh, hey. <laughs> right. Once they realize I can see them. Yes. Um, and uh, so probably anyone who is... Uh, uh, Ray tries to keep this kind of uh, low so he doesn't disturb the, uh, the medical examiner. Um, but okay. anyone who's standing near Ray, probably just going to hear his side of the conversation here. He's like, 
Oh yes, no, no, that's that's uh, it's good, good, good. Now I have a, I, I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to find something out. Uh, if, uh, if anyone is, uh, if anyone happens to know, just uh, to have seen, uh, is this gentleman? He's sort of gesturing with his head back in the direction of the, uh, of the the open drawer. Um, if uh, that uh, uh, young fellow has uh, has been uh, hanging around here, or if anyone saw him. Or where he went? Does anyone know? Anyone? Okay. So there is um, there is an an older woman. Um, she's got uh, like a a purple blouse. She's got red hair. She's got like a, a big old string of beads around her neck. Um, and she uh, sees you and she sees you looking around and um, she comes over I'm afraid I haven't seen the young man. Uh, you happen to, uh, if he would have been uh, brought in, uh, we found him, what, what, this morning? I think it was. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it would have been, uh, uh, so it would have been this morning. So he's not, uh, uh, mm. were you here when they, uh, when they brought in the, uh, when they brought in the body? No, I'm afraid I wasn't here when they brought in the body, but I haven't seen him since either. If his spirit is lingering, it, it didn't come here. Ah, uh, very good, very good. Um, and you know if there's anyone else here who would have been in, in, here when, they, when the body came here because might be a possibility if he was there, but if not, that is fine. Um, well, there was someone, but I'm not sure she'd be much help. She's a, she's a little bit out of sorts at the moment. Ah, I see. I'm trying to help her come to terms. That's very kind of you. That's very good of you. Uh, uh, very well. What can uh, I say? Some habits just die hard, I suppose. Hmm. And so sorry, and seeing seeing is thing that might have been like looking at her as he sort of assumes maybe it was had something to do with what she did as a profession or something. Um and uh, he Ray will He's, nod slowly. Since I'm here, I might as well be of use. That is very good of you. That is very good. Um, well, um, I, I'm a bit uh, in, in the middle of this at the, uh, at the moment, but if there is anything I can do in the future to, uh, to help you, uh, to, um, I, I can always uh, bring back and check, uh, and, and, and check in, if you would. Well, I'm not always here. I just pop in every once in a while to make sure everyone's settled. Hi. And uh, well, yeah, he'll just basically, yeah, so, so, so this will just basically be down to uh, a few little ple pleasantries of like, okay, you know, this is, uh, this is, this is a place where I, uh, where I hang out if you, if you, if you need anything type thing. Uh, the, the way we figured out how to meet up with people before we had uh, before we had cell phones, um, <laughs> um, so he'll just sort of tell her that, and uh, then uh, he'll turn to whoever. I don't know. Was anyone nearby? Did anyone hear him, him have that conversation, or was it, uh, or, or did they just leave him alone? No, Chow, Chow followed along, but he sort of. Uh... He, he he's not fully engaged. Okay. So he'll um, turn to uh, mm -hmm. 
Did we? We could only hear you. Right? Yeah. 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 Generally, most people, unless they have some sort of affinity with spirits, can only see them if the ghost specifically acknowledges you. Yeah. So this is the thing where it's like anyone who, who sort of looked over at Ray saw him talking to nobody mm -hmm. <laughs> for, for like the last minute or so. <laughs> um, and he's going to turn to anyone nearby, uh, like Chow Marsling, whoever is, just sort of will say, uh, well, it seems that uh, it, he probably did not come through here. There wouldn't have been anyone who, uh, who saw him at the time the body was brought in. Uh, but so we would probably need to think about what it is he would have focused on if we want to find his spirit. If in, if it's about. Yeah. And and yeah, anyone who knows anything about magic is like Ray didn't do anything to uh, <laughs> no no ritualistic thing, nothing to try to like activate any type of vision or anything. He just started talking. <laughs> so, so that bit might be a little unusual, but. Uh. But what do you suggest? Uh, well, if we want to still look for his spirit, then it would be uh, uh, somewhere. Then we need to see where you know what uh, anything that he might have been uh, might have obsessed over or felt left undone. Um, so it could be a, uh, he could be lingering around his home, or he could be lingering around. Uh, he was interested in. Uh, the, could he still be lingering around his ex? The, uh, the, uh, Hmm. Uh, um, Maya's friend? That is possible. Uh, depends on what he was focused on. I would think. Uh, it's a, it, it, is, it is hard to say. From what I understand, uh, sometimes it does, does take, uh, with those who have died so suddenly, especially young, if they felt they had lost potentially, they do tend to stick around. Um, and and require more prompting to be able to go to to, to move on. Let me send a message to Maya two seconds. That's a group chat, but whatever. Um I don't know if the Mohini, um, when the Mohini, a Mohini thing, um, is the person dreaming? Uh. Because if they are, then we should probably look with X. Maybe that's the person he was thinking of. Mm, no. Okay. Uh, and and Maya will will type back kind of what she does. Um, Mohini are like a demon, like a demon ghost situation thing. They see a man they like, and they go after them. They are kind of like your the homewreckers of the spiritual world, I guess. Oh. Um. As soon as she sees someone she likes, she becomes incredibly seductive and she goes after him. So, um, especially if they were fighting, um, she may have been, this is all guesswork at this point. Maybe she was at the restaurant. Maybe she saw him walk out and decided to follow him. Hmm. Okay, question. Do they take the soul? Unsure. I'm tracking down someone who would have that answer, though. Do you need a soul? No, just out looking to see if he's hanging around. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> Maya, as you and Astrid are heading out of the restaurant to go see your mentor, mm -hmm. you catch a faint whiff of jasmine. Mm -mm. Hey, uh, Astrid, keep your eyes yeah. on the ground. Okay. <laughs> just um, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know if we're in danger, but I just um, 
I smell jasmine, mm. and that's a that's a very mohini thing, and you don't want to look at them, you know. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, I would like you, and I'm gonna make Astrid roll also to roll. Um, Discipline. Yes, that is the thing. I got it good. Average. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say since you warned her, I'll give her a plus two. Okay. So she's okay. I'm also going to roll for Tessa because reason. Oh God. <laughs> I am. I am. I am hecking concerned. You should be. <laughs> this girl keeps showing up in awkward situations. I can remember which tab I put Tessa in. I put her <laughs> in the changelings. Okay, she's good. She's great. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, is it safe for us to keep moving to, to Jinda now that I kind of know where this Mohini is hanging around or? Is this kind of more of a, we kind of need to stick around and figure this out on our own? It's up to you. Okay. Um. Oh, she's here. <laughs> I think Maya's gut instinct is to to keep things moving um, and to kind of get away from now because she doesn't know how to deal with it. She just knows what it is. Um, okay. So I think I think that's going to be her gut instinct is go. Okay. So. We will go ahead and follow you to Chanda's place. Um, she greets you. Uh, she offers you tea. Of course she does. Um, <laughs> Maya will have some. Not a problem. <laughs> tea and cookies. Yep, yep. All, the whole nine yards. Who's your friend? Is she single? Does she have a very older sister? <laughs> Chanda, you can't do that. <laughs> and then, like, Maya makes, like, a I'm bunch just of... I'm asking. <laughs> I need you to understand the situation, and that just, just a little bit, just a little bit, and like all these excessive gestures to like communicate something underneath. Um, but just this is my friend Astrid. Um, Astrid is a um, the word just left my brain. It would not have left Ectomancer. Maya's brain. An ectomancer. Thank you. Uh, this is my friend Astrid, and she's an ectomancer. Um, we were at the 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 coconut, coconut curry grove. place. The coconut grove. Um, <laughs> we were at the the coconut grove. Um, well, actually, we were going to go to the coconut grove, and then I found out that my friend's creepy, well, crummy boyfriend died. But he died in his sleep of natural causes. Um, we're pretty sure it's a mohini, and I smelled jasmine outside the restaurant. Okay. Yeah. 
I don't know how to fix it. It's not good. <laughs> it's not good. And, you know, don't don't want her doing more of this stuff. Also, happy holy, by the way. It's good to happy see you. <laughs> it's a colorful time. <clears throat> I'm sorry we couldn't be getting together under more pleasant circumstances. Me too. That's all right. That's all right. Um, yeah. How do we, how do we get rid of her? First of all, you have to appreciate the irony of her. It's taking out the Coconut Grove restaurant because Coconut Groves are one of the places Mohinis are are said to frequent looking for lovers <laughs> to attack when they go to have their trysts. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Second of all, how to deal with a Mohini. Um, they tend to avoid contact with holy talismans. And if they are at all similar to um, the Western world's uh, succubus, uh, the white court vampire, then they may also be harmed by true emotions. Um, do, do, do you want me to make her cry? I don't that would be very difficult unless you have some very strong emotions of your own to feed her to which she would react adversely the white court vampire it, the emotion they react to depends on the type of emotion they feed on. Well, we get the feeling that she's she's kind of, you know, classic succubus. The guy seemed pretty darn happy. So if she feeds on lust, then uh, true love would be her anathema, her kryptonite, as the kids would say. <laughs> Makes sense. Barring that, I suppose, holy mantras and talismans. Well, I've got some of those on deck, and she'll pull out the, the lotus talisman from around her neck. But what? That'll only keep me safe. Maybe the mantras can weaken her a little bit, but... Right? They should. And, and if you can find her weaknesses, then you should be able to fight her. Uh, if if she is possessing a mortal, there is the issue of harming the human host. If she has created an ectoplasmic vessel, as most demons and ghosts do when they cross over into the mortal plane, then that is not an issue. You can, you can destroy the body, essentially, and the spirit will return to its home plane. Okay. Of course, some spirits tend to hold grudges, so... Well, we'll take what we can, right? Um, okay, but if it's in a human, what do I do? If it's in a human... There are ways to take off the ghost. <laughs> and my, it just kind of... <laughs> looks at Jenna because she's seen what Jenna can do and she's like okay but I'm not whipping my hair just just 
okay? I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna Everyone put on the whole. Has their own method. Yeah, I'll. I'll. I'll do it. I'll do it my way. For you. <laughs> I listen. I know you love the drama and all of that. I, don't. Don't. Don't forget you. But I'll just. If I gotta take the ghost off, I'll. I'll. I'll take it off a little bit more casually. Got it. Cool. If you are not do, sometimes it is a performance. People expect to see something. <laughs> Also true. If you're you think... not doing it for a witness. Do you think the coconut grove wants a performance? Do you think they, they do you think they appreciate like a like an opening act? How should I'm, I know the answer to this question? I mean, <laughs> look, look, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like, if it turns out that it's a really Do public you, thing, maybe, maybe you can come and do something in, with the full costume. If you find yourself performing an exorcism in public during Holy, in front of many people who have been celebrating for the past two days, you use your best judgment, Maya. <laughs> I have faith in you. <laughs> Fair enough. We'll blame it on the pun. Um, me if you need me. <laughs> promise. I will have you on speed dial because I don't know how this is going to work. Okay. Um, I don't know of anything else. All right. Cool. Uh, I think. I think. I think that's. I think that's everything. Um, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Wait. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. Does Astrid have protection? I can give her this. Holds up the Lotus Talisman necklace. Astrid holds up her own. <laughs> She's got something. It from her grandmother. <laughs> She's good. Any more questions, Ma? No. Go do your job. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I'll let you know how it goes, okay? Okay. <sighs> okay. Um, and with that, I guess we're going back to the coconut grove and Yay! also furiously texting the group everything that she learned. <laughs> um, tells all of the, especially the masculine people, to come with protection. <laughs> Don't think the femmes are in as much danger, but yeah, yeah, guys, definitely like come with a talisman of some kind. Um, and once once they're kind of back at the location, Maya might Maya's first thought is to like kind of like stand outside the restaurant, like not to go in, but to kind of just like quietly start um, speaking mantras and just to just to see kind of if anything kind of like starts to vibrate or start to shake out or anything like that she's kind of okay. just you know taking taking a feel of what's going on at first okay um make an alertness roll all righty that is a great okay so Outside the restaurant, um, you can kind of hear when people are coming in and out, you can hear the music inside the restaurant. Um, there's a generally kind of celebratory atmosphere, which you would probably expect around this time. <laughs> um, People, as they're coming out, um, they're, you kind of overhear them talking about how they can't wait to come back. This is so great. The atmosphere is just, is so pleasant. Um, they really like the wait staff. Um, but, with your sort of 
stretching out like your magical awareness. Um, there's kind of, you get that, that same sort of like, it's like a kind of emotional pull, like when you kind of smell the jasmine and uh, I had to do that discipline roll. So mm -hmm. there's definitely um, something in there and you have felt a similar sort of magical aura or like you're, you're familiar with it because you um, yourself use insight emotions mm -hmm. um, and uh, Sylvester the summer fay tried to use it on you yeah he did yeah. it's it's that kind of a thing someone is definitely um evoking an a strong emotional atmosphere in the place that makes a lot of sense actually yeah um Hmm. There's music playing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh. Yeah, like most restaurants have ambient music, and just kind of in the background. True. 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 Um. Okay. I think Maya is gonna go inside. Um. And I'm assuming Astra is gonna follow. Um. You know, they'll, they'll get another table. Why not? Um, and she's kind of filling in Astrid along the way about what she's kind of like sensing about like, you know, someone who's inciting emotions and, um, you know, has, has texted the group about the, the whole uh, intense emotion thing. And um, at this point, I think her, her gut instinct is like trying to just like figure out who it is because her worst fear is that it's the Mohini is possessed someone especially if it's like happening like within the restaurant itself and not like outside the restaurant um she's pretty sure it's not incorporeal um she's actually gonna flag down tessa again back so soon yeah yeah um I, that that's good i hope yeah love the food right I forgot to say out of character that the one uh, carrot dessert was going to to Jenda. Um, so just okay. adding that now. That was definitely what the other that was what the other dessert was for was for Jenda. Okay. Um, the rest of the food was for Astrid. Yeah. Um, Can I get you anything? Yeah, we'll, we'll get two cups of chai for now. Um, hey, weird favor, but um, I know of this really good playlist that like really help the ambiance. Can I just like I don't know drop you a, a link and you can play it. Did, the boss? Yeah. Let me know. Let me know what he, what he says, you know, really help the help the South Asian vibes, you know? Sure. Cool. Um, and Maya will basically drop uh, uh, a playlist or, or like, g g like t text, I guess, text probably. Um, Maya, uh, Tessa, Tessa Meyer, not Maya Tessa, <laughs> um, <laughs> a, a, a link to basically a, a playlist of, of mantras. Um, okay. and like, especially the, the guy theme mantra, which is like a goddess chant, uh, just again, and get something, get something going that might kind of help, uh, once again, continue to like shake up the foundation a little bit to kind of see what, see what shakes loose, right? Shake the coconut yeah. tree, coconut might fall out. Mm -hmm. that kind of thing all right um so tessa will head back and while she is doing that what is everybody else up to you've got some frantic messages from maya <laughs> 
she, she, she found the the creature at the restaurant. Um, I don't think we need to go to uh, his house then. In all caps, bring protection. Talismans. Well, Ray carries around a real ass God blessed sword. That'll so. do. <laughs> <laughs> it's the rest of them. Like, yeah, I, I think I'll be okay if if uh, if, if I don't mind uh, uh, drawing a sword in, in a rest in a in a populated restaurant. Uh, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but no, I'll be okay. But uh, yeah, every maybe we if, pull the fire alarm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. But that aside, yeah, uh, everyone else probably will need something. <laughs> but uh, I have a holy molotov. Okay. Don't know if that counts as a talisman. Oh, talismans. Um, <laughs> crap, Not crap, yeah. crap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ray, on the way there, can we stop at a pharmacy? And, uh, yeah, actually, uh, this is another big deal, but is, is Pocket going to be okay, or are we going to need to leave her in the car? Or, uh, or She'll be fine. Do you need a talisman? Probably wouldn't hurt. I know she might be okay if she's in my pocket at the time, but I don't want to necessarily. She needs to flee. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I think another text from Maya, even a string of lemon and chilies will do. <laughs> string of lemon chili? Text a text of Hector. It's a string. Hanging with a lemon at the bottom and a bunch of chilies on the top, just on a string. Oh, do they have these at the pharmacy? Uh no, <laughs> we can stop. We can definitely stop at a um, at a grocery store. I mean, we're hunting a succubus, kind of, and we need protection. The fuck you think my talisman is going to be? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna wear a scarf. <laughs> but I like the lemon chili. <laughs> We're gonna go for lemon chili. Condoms are not talismans, y'all. I can enchant them, given enough time. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> the, is the produce abomination really the only option? <laughs> oh, let's stop at the fucking Sephora or something. <laughs> I mean, do they have them there? Uh, that's... Uh... You yes. also get pictures of like, <laughs> like little like necklaces with a Ganesha on them. Like you're getting, you're getting all kinds of. Maya's yeah. dropping as many well, damn hints I, as she can. Juan, I, I'm sorry, Maya. Maybe in back still has, um, still has Tessa's Hamza bracelet. Hmm. Hamza bracelet works. I'm assuming if this is a thing where 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 like Ray is driving is going to be be like. I'm sorry, Maya, Maya may be in danger very soon. Uh, so so. If you if you do not mind terribly, uh, drugstore, grocery store, Sephora, please choose one. <laughs> I can turn anything in a talisman, so I'll go with. Oh wait, what's what's that? Uh, what are the those like bracelets with the little charms that a lot of people have? They're like super expensive. They come from a jewelry store. The Pandora bracelets? Like yeah, the, the Pandora bracelets? bracelets. Yeah. 
You can just get a Pandora oh, bracelet. <laughs> I, I don't know what they are. I don't wear them. Out of game, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you also get texts of like an evil eye, like that you can put on a keychain or on a necklace or on a bracelet, like into the just 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 hint after hint after hint. Also, um black eyeliner, like wear black eyeliner she's like she's just like you're just getting a list of very chaotic things that may protect you at this point <laughs> oh, so marceline's already covered right <laughs> precisely <laughs> are we getting black more eyeliner. protection if we add these together or does it yes. stack <laughs> do they compound <laughs> they stack yes should mark black eyeliner words off evil eye allegedly Why do you think Ramy Valentine wears so much of it? <laughs> right? Not Sharpie. I don't think don't think Sharpie has the same effect. Um, also sends a picture of her own lotus necklace to be like, "This is my talisman." Get with the program. Um. Yeah, stop wherever you want, Ray. I'll. I'll... <laughs> All store. right. And he's just going. He's just going to steer to whatever is whatever is closest uh, on the way <laughs> is going to be whichever one of those three. Oh my whichever god! One of those stores. Please let it not be Sephora. <laughs> it's. I kind of want it to be Sephora, but no. <laughs> a pharmacy or a grocery store. <laughs> There's probably oh, yeah, a grocery store that has a pharmacy section. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, just whatever's close. <laughs> that works. Yeah. They probably also have like a little gift section where you can find like little bracelets and necklaces and stuff. You know. Whatever also, the another text. equivalent of a Harris Teeters is, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Also, another text. You too, Moose Man. <laughs> don't think you're don't think you're too cool for a talisman. Make sure you bring one. I got something. Cool. Okay. So you can get what you need. <laughs> I'm not gonna make you roll for it. <laughs> you're gonna say you find something that mm -hmm. you think will work. Whatever that is for you. <laughs> Imagining Pocket getting like this sort of friendship bracelet or something that she wears as a necklace or something. <laughs> so, you get what you need. You head to the restaurant. You see, um, Maya and Astrid are inside at a table, <laughs> anxiously drinking chai. <laughs> or not drinking it, but they have chai in front of them. Um, as you walk in, I would like you all to make a discipline roll. Out of three. You need to beat a five. Uh oh. Um can I if I use my oh we lost again. Uh oh. Whatever we're rolling against, it took her. Um, oh no, she's back. If I if I use my um, behave yourself, internet. Because <laughs> I have a fate point per 
session, if I use it to give myself a plus two, does that make my three automatically a five? Yes. I'm going to do that so I don't have to invoke any aspect. Well, if you're spending a fate point, typically oh, no. you are. I have to you invoke. Need to inv you have to invoke an aspect. Oh, okay. Um, can you tell me a bit more about what this role is for? Uh, this is to uh, resist her insight emotion. I will call upon my aspect of touched by an angel. Okay. Technically, I and cannot devote myself to anybody else. Okay. Like, he didn't take a vow of celibacy or anything, but, like, it would be... It's a conflict Weird. of interest. Yeah, it's a conflict <laughs> of interest. Okay. Can I spend two fate points? <laughs> <laughs> um, and let me look at her sheet real quick. I think... Um, Okay, actually, she should have taken a minus two to her roll, so you only need to make a three. So, Simon, you can hang on to that fate point I'll for keep, now. I'll keep the fate to. point for now, yeah. yeah. Just in case. Yeah, I'm going to invoke um, my roots are deep and grounded. Okay. And basically give myself a three. You will actually see um, Chow as he's walking in with the rest of the group. He's going to light up a joint. Also, is the mantras playing? Like, does that help this crew out at all? Uh... Let me make a quick roll. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> to see. Maya's and trying to, like, you know, do Tessa as much as she can. Was able to persuade the manager. Uh, yes. So, Excellent. yes. So I, everybody can also take a plus two from the mantras that have begun playing. So is that going to eliminate the need, if we roll the one, will that eliminate the need to spend a fate point? Yes. Yeah, so you, nobody actually needs to spend a fate point. If okay. they get a three. That's good, because I was worried I was going to have to charge into the restaurant with the sword already drawn. Oh, no! <laughs> I was trying yeah, to figure it out. No. I was like, I'm going to have to use the damn sword. It's the only way. <laughs> yeah. Let's do... Yeah. Tess is doing great. Okay. So, you know, someone in the restaurant is using insight emotions. You have to figure out who. She is 
doing it at range and she is doing it to everyone. Which is- So it's not uh, like you can see somebody like Maya, when you incite emotions, you have to actually touch them. Yeah. So that tells me this is some powerful bitch. Is there anyone that I can see that's like sitting around, seeming like she's minding her own business? Just kind of like, I don't know, maybe like pretending she's like poking away on her phone or something. Um, there's, there's a bunch of people in the restaurant. Um, there's kind of the hostess out at her little booth in the front. Is there anyone kind of jumping out at me as suspicious? I'm not um, sure kind of. Anybody who wants to try to figure out who it is can roll um, alertness or investigation. Chow is going to use uh, his sense of smell to try to see if he can uh, catch uh, Jasmine. Okay. I, I will say that I'm uh, on entering, I'm going to be looking around quickly for dead people. Uh, for a moment, just in case, uh, okay. just in case the guy's here. But uh, that's, uh, whether that has any bearing or not, we'll see. <laughs> Duh. Wait, did I roll the right one? Yes. Uh, it looks like you got a three, Chow. Um, so, um, Maya, James, and Chow. Um, you all can smell the jasmine, and it is coming from the hostess. Interesting. Okay. Um. Chow's just going to approach the hostess booth, just uh, take a toke. Do you have any, like, mints around here? And he's just going to start searching the booth. Yeah, she gestures to a bowl on the counter. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to put oh, that out. Sweet. Yeah. No, you see, the thing is, is someone told me that I needed to uh, bring a talisman with me as he uh, takes one of the mints. And this happens to actually be um, a talisman strain of cannabis. Are you fucking so, kidding me? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you, you know, uh, really, I'm just smoking this um, to serve as a distraction. God. Have I said lately that I love Chow? Because I love Chow so much. I, I, I mean, because I, I'm not really dangerous in this whole magic, magic thing, but... Uh, of my associates are except for maybe the tall actress over there don't really know what she's got yet are you trying to distract me so your friends can dine and dash oh no no not at all But, you know, I feel, as he raises his voice, I feel like they should do something right about now. 
Because I'm running out of material. <laughs> um, I'm looking. I'm looking to Ray. <laughs> I mean, unless unless you want James to do something, but you might not want James to do. The only uh, confirmation I guess Ray is looking for is, is is it's like if they're do I see them aiming at well I guess I have two questions then one is do I see do I see the dead the dead person we're looking for and two do I notice them zeroing in on the hostess um no dead people. But you do notice um, Chow is bothering the hostess. Hey, uh, Ray. Hmm. It's a case of possession, right? Yeah. I have to. Uh... How are you at exorcism? Mm. Look at this, and I grab. The pasta, the exorcism pasta that I have in my pocket, and I'll just scream, oh, no. Exorcism! And I'll fling the pasta at the face oh, of the host. No! Uh, casting the, the oh, using it as a boat spell. To, uh, no! My god! Okay. I told I you, you feel... don't want me to do anything. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to need. Um, a, some kind of a ranged attack roll. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Um, oh would would guns work? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. And uh, I will invoke my aspect of it can't just all be a coincidence. I have kept this spaghetti in my coat since before we streamed the campaign, and now I get to use it. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> Astrid is going to change her mind. She does not want that spaghetti inside of her. <laughs> oh, wow. No one with, does. With okay. the bonus, it's a three. Okay. Uh, is it? Yeah, yeah, because I got two minuses. Three. Okay. I'm going to use her athletics to see if she can do Yeah. Uh, she just manages to avoid getting the spaghetti in her face. I'm all out of ideas. I got an idea. Okay. Um, don't know how good of a one it is, but... Um, Uh, I think she's going to tell Astrid, um, especially now that she sees spaghetti flying, um, that maybe Astrid should go pull the fire alarm or something. Okay. Um, because that might be a good idea. And she is going to move towards Priti, um, because she has inside emotion fear, and she's going to attempt to use that. Okay. So... Here's what we're going to do. We're going to roll alertness to establish initiative. Okay. Wow. The number ah. of Jews in there is scary. So, so it's... Everyone All of us. at the same time, except Ray. <laughs> Everyone but Ray. Okay. Ray, 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 Ray is just having a um, off day. Maybe he didn't have coffee in the morning or whatnot. He always waits. He doesn't want to hurt anybody. <laughs> he may have to in a moment. <laughs> I like to think it's your politeness. Politeness gives. Yeah, you basically. Like, uh, no, he's waiting. Yeah, it's his politeness. In the scene. Just waiting for everyone else to go first. He doesn't want to step on their toes. 
Let's swap out Bjorn for Astrid. Oh, honey, you don't, your alertness is mediocre. <laughs> Good news, Preeti rolled minus one. Bad news, Astrid also rolled minus one. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, we'll take what we can get. Okay, so between the four of you who rolled twos, uh, I I don't think it was James first. I could have you roll again. I mean, do, do y'all want me to go first since I'm the one that's going to try yeah. touching Preeti? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, I guess Maya okay. will will head over, kind of like, hey, Chow, and uh, kind of like lean over and and say, oh, Preeti, I've got to commend you. Such a great restaurant you got here. And just touch her on the shoulder. Okay. Uh, totally so Loki as if Getty wasn't just tossed. versus your is it intimidation that you use for this? Uh, I think it's deceit. Okay. <clears throat> it's a tie. Jesus, Lord. She stares you down. Like, really? You're playing with the big girls, honey. Uh -oh. oh, damn! <laughs> That's what Chow. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. God damn it! <laughs> Maya just gives you this look that's like, I'm gonna kill you when I'm done here. <laughs> Sorry, was that out loud? Pretty sure it was. Um. Oh. Mm. Marceline, James, or Chow? <laughs> uh, sure. Marceline uh, hears this woman that she doesn't know uh, basically taunting Maya, so she'll come over because that now she's interested. <laughs> you know? Okay. <laughs> Just like, um, what what's happening over here? What's going on here? Maya, Chow, whoever you are. This is Chow is just gonna take the bowl of mints and he's gonna step back and you know eat them while watching this confrontation between all three women go down. I'm going to have to ask you and your friends to leave. I'm sorry, do you own this place? Is this your restaurant? Because I didn't see your name up front. Oh, now she has nothing to say, huh? I'm the hostess. And if you won't, leave calmly i am going to call the manager oh no the manager <laughs> really okay maya what's what's the situation over here what's going on here um we're interested in talking to Preeti because Preeti wears jasmine perfume Oh, does she? Okay. Now, does Preeti happen to know, um, what was his name? 
you know. I mean, the last time I asked Breathy, she said she didn't know anything about it. But something tells me she followed him home. What do you say? I mean, I say that she could have probably done better, but... Oh, she could definitely... I mean, I don't know. Looking at her... Well, you see, here's the thing. Preeti likes inciting emotions, and Chase decided to fight with his girlfriend, and then she decided to follow him home because she wanted her, or him, for herself. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, not in that I dress, did I that hope. girl a favor. Listen, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Problem is, you're still a problem. Now the question is, are you going to continue to be a problem? That depends. If you're not going to leave my restaurant, then... You're, you're going to call the manager, I know. I want to see. I want to see the manager. You, you should call the manager over. Okay, I'd like to can, speak can to I... your manager. Oh, there it is. <laughs> There's the move. Yeah. <laughs> can, can can I can I roll contacts to see if I know the manager? You roll contacts to see if you know the manager. Is the manager one of your yeah. clients? Who sure. isn't one of his clients? <laughs> sure. Uh, I was gonna say, if you roll three or up, then yes, you know the manager. <laughs> okay. What's the manager's name, Chow? <laughs> um, that is a very good question. Uh, I, I'm gonna say that his his the manager's name is um, uh, Bupin Butani. Okay, so the manager comes out. Well, that depends. Do you do you let do you let Preeti go back and get the manager? I just figured that she would call on like the intercom or something. Okay. Okay. So she called the manager <laughs> and the manager comes out. Chow definitely knows the manager. Yeah, Chow's just gonna say, Boopin, how's it going? It's going well. How are you? Oh, yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing all right. And all right. Um, what'd you think of that cilantro that uh, came from the Vaughn farm? It's excellent, as always. What seems to be the problem? Oh, I, I just think we have a little bit of a disagreement with your um, hostess. Really? What's yeah. wrong? Um, I think it's that uh, we think it's a crime that she murdered someone, and she thinks that it was okay. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> it wasn't actually pretty, it was the Putni, but... Um... No, actually fired the innocent possessed employee. Basically, you should go pull the fire alarm and make sure we don't leave. Or her. Sorry. So, so you're trying to convince the manager to pull the fire alarm? I guess so. I mean, I don't okay. know what else to do here. Roll. But the point is, we need this girl and we need everybody else to go. <laughs> Persuasion? Uh, do I have persuasion? You can always roll mediocre. Crap, I don't <laughs> Unless have you have some other social skill you'd like to use. 
a rapport. Do you have rapport? I do have rapport. Absolutely. That is that is so one one improvement above everything. <laughs> Ooh, that's a zero. Yeah. <laughs> well, zero beats a minus two. Hey, <laughs> I'll take it. You have just confused the heck out of this poor mortal, but apparently he's going to pull the fire alarm. Pice up after that. Go lock yourself in your office, say the Hanuman Jalisa, and just wait. Trust me. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't know what's going on, but he's going to the office. <laughs> so. Now what? So we have a fire alarm, right? Or no? Yeah, you uh, uh, will if, have. Yeah, because I was going to say, if it, no one pulls it immediately when Maya says it, um, you'll just see James in the background go, Oops! <laughs> <laughs> and pull okay. the fire alarm. Either way, uh, it's been pulled at this point. Okay, yes. So now you have a bunch of... Um, Slightly panicked diners rushing toward the exit. Fire, fire. <laughs> so there's chaos and panic. Now all we need is destruction and my work will be done. <laughs> <laughs> Whose turn is it right now? Um, Let's see. We had Maya, we had Marceline, we had James and... Chow, I guess it's Ray's turn. Unless there's something that right? specific Chow wants to do besides uh, popcorn.gif. <laughs> so, um, he's just gonna ask James, hey, so, uh, if I were to pick up this spaghetti and throw it at the hostess. <laughs> Would it still work? Um, you know what? Let me just see if I can pull. Uh, technically, I have a slot open because of the flask, so I could have turned the spaghetti because uh, I need an extra shift to be able to make it usable by anyone but myself. Uh, so I'll take the shift for that and I'll take an extra shift. So I will take mental stress for it. But if you're okay. okay, for one mental stress, I can make it so that it can be used twice per session. Okay. For this session only. Okay. Ow, I have a headache now. But yes, knock yourself out, Chow. So, so, so Chow is just going to reach down and grab the pasta. He goes, ugh, this wasn't al dente. And he's just going to scoop it upward into the hostess's face. Okay. We're not going to throw it, so, so I guess this would technically count as a melee attack. Okay. <laughs> Technically, if you're covering her in red, it counts as holy. <laughs> I mean, we, the last time we did that, it was with tomatoes. So, I mean, it's about time. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was at the rally. Okay. Um... I did. I don't know how I did that <laughs> <laughs> because uh, in this form, Chow's got an average for fisticuffs. <laughs> you really looked out on your dice there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jesus.
Okay. So as you um, grab the pasta and scoop it up and shove it into her face, she is going to attempt to block your hand. And uh, that's a two, so she fails. She tries to grab your hand and use incite emotions on you, but uh, she fails. Spaghetti's a little too slippery <laughs> or something. <laughs> Does he feel like, does he feel a tingle from that uh, insight to emotion? Mm, maybe a little, but like not enough that I would have to make you roll to resist it because she... She did not block, successfully block you, so. Okay. So. A uh, uh, child is just going to say something like, ah, oh, joke's on you, I'm dead inside. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, does anything happen to Preeti? No. Huh? No. <laughs> this is not a possession. What? What? This is oh, a well, spirit who a has an ectoplasmic body. Okay, well then that's good at least. So you don't have to worry about hurting a human, but you're fighting a demon. Oh. Turn is it? Uh I believe it's Ray's it's turn. Race. Okay. Oh well. So that being the case, just sort of seeing and seeing there's no effect. Ray will nod. Just sort of stand up, unbuttoning his coat. Uh, <laughs> and step forward and uh, says, ah, 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 so, ah, so, so I see we're doing this directly. He will draw his blade as he steps forward. He says, okay. I must ask you to vacate this plane immediately. And the blade bursts forth with sunlight. I'm going to mm -hmm. spend a fate point to activate its ability to kill her defenses. Uh, basically, the, the, the all creatures are equal before God. Uh, okay. Where uh, basically I can spend a fate point to ignore that opponent's defensive abilities, as well as any mundane armor the foe has for the duration of this. Okay. Um, <laughs> and uh, I guess we're... <laughs> Moving forward, and I'm trying to. Uh, I'm going to try just using the force of the reveal of the blade to uh, to to uh, see if that will. I don't know if I. It, I just fought a demon not too long ago. Am I going to have to to perform stabbery upon the demon for this to to, to work, or it will is, does just holding the blade up do anything? It's well, kind of like a holy symbol, which it is. Mm. <laughs> It is a holy symbol. It, it is a holy symbol, and she does not want it to touch her. She recoils as it lights up. So, if need be, to uh, yeah. So I don't want. So like, if I touch the blade, will that uh, to to her? Does that a thing that I think will cause her to leave the plane, or do I or do I actually need to? Um. In, if you most likely um, you will have to do some damage to you will basically have to ruin the vessel 
you'll have to destroy the vessel if you want the spirits to leave or at least damage the vessel if you want the spirit to leave um because um yeah uh, well you've you've sort of nullified any like superhuman recovery that she may have had um with the sword's ability but um um otherwise she she is potentially inclined to fight you okay so if it, if that is very clearly the case then um do I, uh, do it, was that my action or do i need to or or do i or, or, or shall i perform stabbery <laughs> um i does the sword say that it requires an action to activate it or i don't think it does let I me think, see. It's, I don't uh, the, think it's, so. Uh, I think that's yeah, just. The knight may uh, spend a fate point to ignore that opponent's spins as well as in yeah, yeah. the duration of the scene. Um, for uh, yeah, and it doesn't say it doesn't say it. I think getting the sword out and telling her to go is just a thing that you can do. So if you would like okay. to attack, so yeah, if it and hopefully this doesn't look like me just you know stabbing a poor woman. Uh, <laughs> Well, I'm hoping there's some evidence. Who knows what it looks from the, like geez. in the chaos and yeah. panic, yeah. <laughs> confusion. Knows? But uh, it, otherwise, yeah, no, I'm just going to I'm going to to come in and start sort of start swinging in toward the legs. Basically, <laughs> they say take out the legs first. That's okay. That's, that's what my mother taught me. Uh, and so, in this case, <laughs> and in this case, why? It's because it's a moini. They cook with their legs. So, uh, yeah, I, I shall go ahead and uh, use my weapons ability, which I don't think I've done before in this campaign yet. <laughs> Here we go. Besides stabbing a vampire. Oh, that's right. Well, no, that was empathy. Not I think on I, stream, I think though. I think I was wielding it remotely. Yeah, okay. that's true. That's true. Okay. She doesn't actually have any armor, so she's going to, uh, she's going to take some stress. So I will mark off her number four box. And now it is her turn. And um, as you slash at her legs, uh, you see flames rise up around the lower half of her body. She lights her legs on fire and she's gonna clear that stress box. Oh, no. Oh, no. Why is it it's the hostess that gives us the most problem? <laughs> the hostess with the mostest? Uh-huh. Um, go. We go uh, yeah. Full, we go full <laughs> Mall of America. Here, I don't remember. Jen that did say something about emotions. Marceline, tell me how much you love Bjorn. Oh, he's so he's really cute. Why? Why? Just keep talking. Just talk about Bjorn. Just, just 
just talk just just tell me more just emotion emotion true love emotion oh true love i think it's too early to talk about true love honestly. i mean i don't care but just 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 tell me about how much you love him um <laughs> i mean he's he's really handsome there's, he's got that going on and okay. he's um he's really tall which is nice and like i mean not that it's anybody's business but he's like really well hung well, and that's good to like know. okay so <laughs> so you love him mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i mean i don't know if i call him love it's getting no. there it'll get there eventually warming but, okay, okay so okay. Like the other day we were uh, working on set of the movie that he's working on. And uh, there was this scene that came up where he had this line that he had to deliver a certain way. And he's just, you know, he's a really good actor in certain instances, but in other, he's, he's just not very good at like, I mean, he's very sincere. He's very honest about things. He's not very good at lying. But unfortunately, as an aside while she's like talking, <laughs> uh -huh. as an aside while she's talking, is this doing anything or no? Do we need stronger emotions? I think we might need stronger emotions. No. It's going to roll her eyes. You need somebody with depth. Please okay. find someone. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. Chow, how high are you? Uh, not nearly high enough for this. Ah, crap. <laughs> crap. <laughs> are you going to... Anyway. Um, so, yeah. Uh, it looks like she's ready to try and uh, attack. Wait, what's the Somebody. importance of emotions? Probably Ray. Dude, she gets overwhelmed by emotions. Like, 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 if she's over here trying to cause, like, lust or happiness or excitement, the opposite of that will kill her. Okay, well, what's she trying to cause? What is she trying to cause, actually? It sounds, it, I think it was happiness. My, my guess is happiness. Well, generally, um... Vampires and demons can't actually, like, they can incite real emotions, but not, like, true emotions. Um, and so they're, they're generally going to be, like, a twisted form of it. So it'll be more like, um, like, pleasure and lust versus genuine happiness or love. Mm -hmm. uh, they can make you infatuated with them, but they can't make you fall in love. So, like, true emotions would overwhelm her? Is that what uh, you say? Well, um, it would be like sunlight to other types of vampires. All right. So it would inflict damage. Um, any <laughs> kind of strong emotion... Um, could cause her to go into a feeding frenzy and you'd all be in even more trouble. Oh dear. Um, oh, so it's gotta be the right emotion. Yeah. Hey. I, I was about to push Dar Chow into a very dark place before I'm like, mm, that probably mm. won't work here. I mean, I have a, a, what's it called? Hold on. Brain not working. Aspect that's single riders only which is the more people in the smaller a space that you have around marceline the worse it's like a <laughs> it's the the more people that she has around her in a more enclosed space the more likely she is to explode so okay. like <laughs> And there are a lot of people. Uh, you're all standing around the hostess booth, and all of the diners are trying to get out of the exit. So, but what if that's the wrong emotion? See, that's the problem. Now we don't know what emotion we're trying to go for. Um, no, we don't know. Could I, could I roll empathy to see what kind of emotion you're trying to cite? I mean, as she's attacking Ray, and that, that's what you said. Yes, as she is attacking Ray. Um, so 
she is going to attempt to get inside this, the reach of your sword and grab you. Um, so I'm going to roll for her. Um, so that's a six. You will need to beat a six to uh, resist her incite emotion as she's going to attempt. To. She's going to attempt to incite despair ah okay what am because i because you're what very I... clearly not going to fall for her charms but so what am i uh, am i rolling a thing and uh... uh discipline i have none so this will be fun um <laughs> i don't think it's possible for me to get a well i've got fate points i got a couple of fate points we'll see what happens um, all right. Let's see how well we do. Oh, no, that's not good at oh, all. Oh, no. Um, so you take a swing at her. She yeah. steps inside the reach of your sword and she touches your face and looks into your eyes and she says, I'm too tired of being so nice to everyone all the time. Don't you ever want to just give up on everyone? And um... I'm too tired of fighting. <laughs> and uh... is it really worth it? I think that uh, just going to sort of stop and is like, and is like, is, is his eyes will tear up a little bit um, as she's doing it. She says, has to. If just because they just because they let they let me down sometimes doesn't mean they're that way all the time. There has to be an end to it. This is all I know how to do. I'm sorry. I, I have to. But I, what I want doesn't matter. It, it doesn't. And uh, you see a little bit of a tear is starting to roll down his cheek. <coughs> oh, no. What I'm for. So anything we can do to shake Ray out of it, or is it kind of more so keep focusing on her? Yeah. Um. You know, the whole world is not just bleak and despair, right? 
and he'll James will walk up to Ray and just put a hand on his shoulder. There's light everywhere, Ray. And no one, not even this pathetic excuse for, uh, Demon, what, what, what exactly would I, I should refer to you as a, a pretty, but also, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> there is, there is joy in happiness and hope everywhere in every tiny action in every. In every minute, every second. There is something good happening, and you're just not seeing the good that's happening to you. You are such a ray of good, Ray. Literally. Yeah. Well, Maya, it's your turn. Uh... Did Astrid get to do anything? Uh, she has not done anything. Uh, someone else already pulled the fire alarm, so. We're not really dealing with ghosts. I mean, it's a demon. Yeah, isn't she made of ectoplasm? It's true. Made of ectoplasm. Ghostbusters! Exactly! Oh god, what are you thinking? I was joking, I'm scared now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think this uh, restaurant has a uh, nuclear power plant in the background, in the, the back store. Yeah. No. How hard is it to, uh, quick question like that, how hard is it to open a door to the Never Never? I mean, I've done it before. Can't Maya do that? Yeah. What are you thinking? We can just physically shove her in there or close the door. Would that work, work, though? I mean, it would potentially... It would, it would put her somewhere else. And depending on whether or not she has the ability to travel between worlds... It could take her a while to get out. She could run into other things there that might give her a hard time. Works for me. So, so Chow just doesn't. Sort of going I just want to point out. Yes. Uh, uh, Chow doesn't know this, but we don't know what's in this section of the Never Never that you're, you're opening not. a portal to. Fair. So, <laughs> so, so you could shove her in there, but something bigger and more scary might come out. Yeah, it's like the end of True. Monsters Incorporated, where they just shoved Randall through a random door, you know? Yeah, you could, you could have problems down the line. But yeah, no, no, let's go for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, what's Astrid doing, though? Astrid is basically um, getting ready to, like, cast protective wards if, if she needs to. She is writing defensive spells. Um, okay. Okay. 
But we still haven't figured out what emotion she wants. Was it not despair? Yeah. No, that's what no. that's what she caused in Ray. But she was when earlier when everyone was leaving the restaurant, they were all like, "Oh my god, we love this place!" Like they were super yeah. happy, you know. So, oh. um, so you gather she can feed on more than one emotion. Crap. If she can't get you to fall for her charms, she can apparently feed on despair as well. Okay, well, the opposite of what? Despair is hope. Yeah. Which is what I tried to feel, quote-unquote, Ray with. Well, hope is something that definitely, Amaya definitely has. I mean, Ray is such a source of hope for her every time. Um, Maya. Yes? Today is the celebration of good triumphing over evil. Yes. That too. Yes. Yeah. The goddess chant has been going on in the background. You feel a presence. Beside you, inside you, around you. Okay, she'll 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 let it in. Okay. You have an aspect about being a light in dark places. Yes. 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 You sense this presence is offering you a bit of holy fire. Is this holika? Yes. Ah! Okay. Yep. So, uh, I am offering you some sponsored magic. Oh, if that's you not accept, bite else later. Uh -huh, uh -huh. you will gain the soul fire ability. Okay. It's extra potent. Uh, you Jim have knows what that is. <laughs> oh God. Evocation um, and thaumaturgy. Do you? You you have channeling and uh, ritual. You yeah. don't have full evocation and thaumaturgy. No. So, um, this is going to be like. Uh, a special and it will cost you extra stress. Okay. But uh, if you accept, you will be able to channel this holy fire, at least for now. Can I play your ex machina? Because I have an idea. Yes. I accept. I accept. And also, while I was at Jenna's place, um, I picked up a package of holy color. Let's say it's orange. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and I have that in my pocket. Okay. And what I would like to do before, before we, before we actually do it, what I'm thinking I would like to do is, is, uh, uh, allow Holika to help me out and basically grab a fistful of the orange powder and just toss it at the demon and hope that it erupts into flame when it hits her. Okay. It does. This is so badass. It does. It ignites when it makes contact with her and the fire 
that is surrounding her lower body. And that fire transforms into something brilliantly white hot and it consumes her ectoplasmic body. And in for a brief moment in place of the demon, you see a shining feminine form that sort of looks at you and nods and then the demon is consumed and disappears and you are the most exhausted because you've just channeled more magic than you have ever channeled in your life yep i'm pretty sure she kind of collapses to the floor a little bit Astrid comes to your side to put an arm around you and support you. Whoa, that was uh, ooh, 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 ooh. Is there any chai left? Also, do I take any actual stress that I need to mark off on my sheet? Yes. Um, how much? Um, what is your, um, discipline score right now? Uh, it is a great, aka a plus four. Four. Okay, so, um, you will take one stress for now. Uh, mental or physical? Mental. She would really like a cup of chai. Yeah. Astrid will <laughs> take you back to the table and give you the chai. So that happened. Uh, I think that's literally Maya's next words is, so that happened. I've been oh, yeah. released. Oh, yes. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I assume the artificial despair is no longer there, but it's, uh, yes, probably. Yeah, he's so he's like that is gone. Like, like, but she was trying to touch a very dark place inside yeah. you. Uh-huh, <laughs> yeah, he's gonna, like rub his eyes for a second. It's like he's just looking around. He's, Estrid oh, brings the oh, other cup everyone of all right? chai to Ray. <laughs> is, is everyone okay? All good. Was anyone hurt? Nope. We're good. You're okay. Promise, Ray. You're okay. He's um going to gently is going to sheathe the sword. Sort of looking at it. He's just hugging her chai. And, uh, he's probably just going. He's going to find somewhere to sit down, and he's going to just maybe if it's by a table, he's going to sit down with his palms down on the table for like just a minute. Uh, you should probably go before the fire department gets here. Wait, did the fire, the whole, the, the holy the fire is spreading? No. no okay, the I thought it but just... The fire alarm was oh, pulled. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> yes. Okay. I got it. I can I can handle it. I, I think I know what to say. Uh, uh, how long have you been able to do that, Maya? That was the first. I mean, I didn't even touch a card. Yeah, that was some serious Green Lantern shit. Um, okay. I thought all your magic came from your cards. So did I. That was, um, uh, that was not me. That was, um, somebody, something, something else. Happy holy, y'all. Hey, hey, Astrid. Astrid, come here. Come here. 
Come closer. Come, come, come here. And like, we'll make Astrid like lean in and she'll like reach into her pocket and then like smear Astrid's face. Happy holy. Happy holy. Anyone else want baseball? Yeah, sure. Come here then. <laughs> and anyone that leans in will get, will get a face, will get half a face covered in, covered in orange colorful powder. Cause that's what, that's, that's, that's part of the, that's part of the whole thing. It might think, not be I washed think... away now and next time. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm, just, does he not shower? <laughs> oh, things are going to happen with James. <laughs> oh, no. Mm. Oh, no. <laughs> All will, will be revealed that... in time. I will just say that as if uh, once people have received their, their, their face mirrors, Ray will himself together enough to go over to Maya um, and um, if he permits if Maya permits it he will briefly hug her oh she trust me if and you didn't she was will, gonna give you one anyways and he will say he'll just whisper to her and after if any sort of space mirroring of any kind happens he's actually just gonna kind of get up and he's going to stagger out Wait, but what did he um, whisper? I didn't quite catch it. Sorry. He said, sorry. He whispered, thank you. Poor guy. Kinda, he's going to start heading out. <laughs> mm. A lot of thinking. <laughs> uh, GM, question. So, yes. at the end of our, like, Christmas special, before we went into the, the never, never, and all that kind of stuff, um, Marceline sent a text to people in the winter court to ask if they had any additional information about the, the big man in red. Did right. she ever get, did she ever get a text back about that? Um, you probably did get. A message back from the um, the senior royalty, the the queen of the Northlands mm -hmm. was her title in the parade, um, and uh, it's sort of a this is a conversation we should have in person. <laughs> okay, so. We can do that next week because next week is going to be a downtime episode where we get to fool around and find out. Ooh. Oh, cool. Well, that's it for our episode tonight. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you, players, for taking time off of your. Friday night to come uh, throw spaghetti and uh, set people on fire. Um, but also, thank you for this uh, holy themed uh, episode. It was, it was very nice. It was very cool. Um, and uh, well, thank you to all of you uh, in chat. Thank you for the follows. Thank you for the resubs. Uh, thank you for uh, the everything. Thank you to our sponsors. But uh, I'm going to uh, hand the mic over to this brilliant cast. If you have anything to shout out uh, anywhere that you are going to be, we're going to do the opposite order haha, of uh, our intro. So we will begin with Maya. Hello, I am Leanna. You can find me on Twitter at the Leanna Maple. That is the best place to keep up with me and all of the things that I am up to. Uh, so please follow me there to know more about all of the DEI work that I do and all the streams and places you can find me. Uh, I can't think of anything to, to shout out. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to, but please have a wonderful weekend. Happy Holy. Now you know a little bit about it and some of the wild shit that happens. Thank you so much. Up next, Ray. Good evening. I have been Ray. Um, I am uh, I'm Jim Ryan. I'm a writer, streamer, and podcaster. Um, 
and uh, you can uh, find me at uh, other doc. That's O T H E R D O C on both Twitch and Twitter. Uh, my website is Jimmy that Jim.com and uh, I have various things. And uh, let's see. So uh, we are uh, on my channel. Uh, I will be uh, well, does any luck provided things hold up tomorrow night uh, on my channel? We're doing, I think, the final uh, development session, in between development session uh, for our Invisible Sun campaign. Um, and so uh, then, so we're going to be back to the uh, the regular campaign very soon. That normally happens on Saturday nights. Um, and then uh, I have this on Fridays. I have uh, signups currently open for a short campaign. I'm going to be starting in late April, um, which I'm calling Void's End. It is a, a, a space-faring tech noir campaign, or a space noir campaign. Uh, and I'm mashing a couple of different systems together to do it. It is a, uh, a, a, a GM-less game, technically, uh, in that it, there's going to be one... It, it's going to be a, a detective story uh, on a distant planet. Uh, there is one player who's the investigator, and everyone else uh, take turns as the, the authority, who basically throw noir tropes at them. Um, and... Uh, and so it's 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 very much a uh, very much a, a a come up with cool story bits and then we figure out how they link together and who is responsible for various crimes and what have you, which I think is going to be fun. Um, and uh, so signups for that are currently open. They're open through uh, Wednesday, the twenty third. Um, so just a few more days left for anyone who wants to sign up for that. Uh, to do so, you can go to jimyesthatgym dot com and click on game sign up, and the link will be right there. Uh, if there is any interest in that. Um, as far as this, this was wonderful. Um, I, uh, I am very happy to be playing with, with these folks. And, uh, this was, this was very cool and interesting because it is, uh, kind of opening up a thing that I was thinking about doing with Ray at some point. Uh, so, um, oh, no. oh, no. <laughs> we're going oh, yeah. to start riding this, <laughs> this train a little further and see what happens. Um, as the, as as the uh, as as the, the the armor has finally cracked, so um, we're gonna that 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 tells me a little bit of what I want to do with my unspent skill points that uh, that that I needed to take. Because only when you're used as a weapon for so long, there's you can only hold out for so long before you give in and start finally doing some of the things they were encouraging you to do, but you never resorted to. So we'll see how things go. Um, Aren't you tired but, uh, of being nice? Don't you just want to go ape shit? No, <laughs> no right? That voice just in there, and uh, so we have to uh, we have to think about that. Um, so this is going to be very interesting. Thank you all very much. Very cool. I can't wait to see uh, where this goes. Uh, next, thank you. By the way, uh, Ray, for coming. Uh, Alyssa, you're next. Hey everybody, thank you for watching and thank you all for playing. I had a wonderful time poking at your armor and your backstories and I'm going to continue to do so and see what happens. I'm sorry, not sorry. <laughs> um, you can find me on the internet at Shawl Tales. Uh, follow my Twitter. That's the most likely place to see what I'm up to. This is my only streamed game at the moment. Um, but yeah, more of this next week and maybe we can give these folks a little bit of a breather. Maybe. Maybe not. We'll see. Downtime. <laughs> Downtime. Uh, thank you, Alyssa. Ciao. You're next. Uh, hey everyone, my name is Anino. You can find me on Twitter at Anino4K. I think you probably catch me tomorrow on this channel at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for the next episode of Scion. And then uh, I think that's it until um, Edge of Paradox starts back up over on Other Docs channel. Um, yeah, I got nothing else. Thank you for being here. Last but not least, Marceline. I am Marceline. 
I was Marceline. Now I'm Hannah. You can find me on Twitter at Hanimation Art and everywhere else at Hanimation Studios. And you can find me back here tomorrow for Scion. Very exciting. We finally escaped the bone pit. Go us. Yeah. It was another uh, uh, Desi-themed uh, game. They uh, pissed off a Rakshasa. Oh, damn. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they they had they had tons of fun. <laughs> Anna set herself on fire. Um, hello, oh I'm I'm Simon. Thank you for coming. This was the uh, Wandering Society. Uh, you can find us over on Twitter at uh, the Wandering at Wandering S C T Y. Uh, if you're interested in uh, trying out stream games or streaming games yourself. Uh, we offer uh, help with production uh, or with GMing if you want to try your hand at production and you're looking for a group to uh, run production for. Uh, we're always on the lookout for all of those things. Um, very comfy. Yeah. Uh, you can find us again tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern for Scion. Uh, then we'll be back on uh, Tuesday for uh, tomorrow on Revelation 3, right? Yes. yes. Next Tuesday for tomorrow on the Revelation 3, which is our Hope Punk campaign in a ultra capitalistic space station, which ends up being just a lot of crime and nickelback. Um and uh also on uh April April 10th at 2 p.m. Time might be subject to change, but it's supposed to be afternoon. Uh, we will be, uh, I will be jamming a Animon Story charity game, uh, over on Play Cancer Away for charity called, ah, you're in my face, um, <laughs> for Table Tochki, which is a Ukrainian children's cancer charity. Um, so if you like Pokemon, if you like Digimon, if you liked our first Animon, a charity game where uh, it's actually going to be a sequel, uh, sort of like uh, one or two years later. And uh, we'll have some returning faces, we'll have some brand new faces. But oh, look out for this. On that note, we're going to get going. And, uh, we hope you have a great weekend. See you next week, everyone. <laughs> When the sun starts growing colder and the dark starts getting bold You don't know what the cards are holding and you think you ought to fall I got faith to spare, change is in the air Embrace it if you dare, transform your destiny You've been down on your luck, oh but I'm not giving up Sometimes just enough is all you need When the sky flashes a warning of the struggles to be born You gotta hold out till the morning So you turn to face the storm Let the shadows Sometimes just enough is enough.